Hey guys, how you doing? So, uh, giant hands. Let's talk about flexibility. The best developers are the most flexible developers. Why? Because when you become a more experienced, advanced developer, a big part of your job is figuring out solutions to problems, and this often means learning new things or thinking about the problem in a different way so you can engineer a solution. It's not about always using a particular library or framework. It's in fact being able to think outside of those uh, confines. You gotta be a little bit more uh, open-minded about whatever you do if you wanna become a very successful developer, a very successful uh, engineer, that's for sure. So one of the things I teach is flexibility of mind. Uh, this is so important. That's why in my mentoring program, I actually have training specifically on that, on how your brains work. You got two operating systems in your brain. You got your lower operating system, I call the lizard brain, and you got the higher level operating system. If you get more detail, there's actually three. There's the monkey, there's the lizard, and there's the nerd. What people don't realize is that the monkey and the lizard brain, these are operating systems. They uh, have huge impact in terms of your day-to-day -day behavior and big life choices as well. We like to think of ourselves as uh, logical, rational beings, but we're not most of the time. Most of the time, we're totally irrational. Now, if you're a developer, this you understand. We construct our image of reality. We represent our reality and decipher it most of the time as a series of multi-dimensional arrays. We create associations, and the more associations will lead us to think about how reality is. So for example, if you make more and more associations between an apple being healthy, an apple being healthy, an al apple's healthy, apple's healthy, I'm creating an association by just repeating an apple is healthy, you eat an apple, it's healthy, apple a day keeps the doctor away, apple's healthy. You get the idea. You do this enough times, your brain will internalize that and go, apple's healthy, and won't question it. And in fact, if somebody will question you about whether or not an apple is healthy, if somebody one day comes to you after you've internalized that, someday somebody comes to you and says, hey, an apple isn't healthy, and you're gonna get angry. Your lizard brains go, hey, no, 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 an apple's healthy. We've determined that through association. Now you notice, when I told you an apple is healthy, I didn't present any evidence of it. You didn't see any evidence of it. The only thing that you heard was me saying that an apple was healthy, it wasn't broken down, it wasn't proven to you through scientific means, it was just a statement. But when you hear the statement enough, you internalize it, there you go, Bob Jonko, that's what you believe from now on. Because you have to be flexible of mind as a developer, I teach people how the brain works so then you can leverage techniques, practical techniques, to steer your crazy powerful but sometimes very irrational lizard brain to make proper decisions. So as a developer, you're always trying to solve problems. You're always looking at situations that don't fall in line with all the tutorials that you see out there. Being a developer is much, is much more like being a detective. I've said it many times, a junior developer thinks of himself as a JavaScript developer or a Python developer or a React developer, or a PHP developer, not a Ruby developer. Nobody ever thinks of themselves as they have any class as a Ruby developer. But as you get more advanced, as you get more advanced, you don't think of yourself as a developer, as a Java developer, a JavaScript developer, Python developer, etc. You think of yourself as a developer. You are a developer. And whatever technology, whatever library, whether it be React or Vue, whether it be Java or C Sharp, or PHP, whatever it is, you start thinking in those terms, in terms of uh, what technology you need to leverage to deliver the result that you need for your client. So you gotta start thinking that way. That's why in my mentoring program, I teach what I characterize as the fundamentals, the foundations. Um, this is not to be confused with the basics. The basics are part of the foundations, but the foundations our broad set of skills and an advanced and deep, deep understanding of software development, of coding, of languages. So why is this important? Because once you understand the fundamentals, you will be able to jump into any situation and with reasonable skill and time be able to solve the problem. 
because at the end of the day, advanced developers are problem solvers. If you take anything away from this video, be flexible, be flexible of mind. Don't become religiously uh, loyal to a particular language or a particular framework or a particular operating system. Learn to, to accept that nothing is perfect and as a professional, you have to be able to switch, switch teams depending on the needs of the situation, team being language. So I've done that in my own career. Sometimes I jump from Java to PHP. We've even done stuff for Ruby. We've done no SQL implementations, SQL-based implementations, uh, Linux-based servers, uh, Java peer servers, uh, Windows servers. You get the idea, right? We jump around. I've built so much software with languages and frameworks and libraries that you've never heard of. Some have disappeared, but they did well. These days, we're in a great time because all the software out there is really pretty good these days. It's pretty amazing. Uh, all the frameworks, all the languages are pretty refined. Yes, there are problems. There are problems. Nothing's perfect. If you're just new to the game, remember, be flexible. Be flexible of mind. Flexible in the body is also good, too, for your health, by the way. Just say. Anyway, be flexible of mind. And uh, you can't pick a wrong language to learn. You can't pick a, a wrong framework to learn. Because once you learn how to write, write software, whether you learn it with Java or PHP or uh, Python or JavaScript, or C Sharp, both skills will transfer almost 100% to any other language. It's not a big deal. All right, I hope you found this useful. My name is Uncle Steph, and I mentor people in the ways of code. Yeah, I'm filming this in an unusual location. I figure, eh different from uh, my uh, my condo, right? Different from being in my condo. We'll talk soon. Bye.